Told, I told you today we are going to discuss about the circulatory system in fishes. Okay, we will um, first in this class we will discuss about the circulatory system and then the circulatory system in fishes particular. Okay, so anyone can define me what is circulatory system if I'm talking about circulatory system what does it mean? Ma'am, transport of blood uh, throughout the body. Transport of blood throughout the body. Koi aur isko supplement karna chahega? Anyone? Ma'am, not only blood, uh, uh, like other blood and uh, um, oxygen also. Oxygen also, okay. Or coach, a circulatory system. Uh, uh, actually, when we talk about nutrients, 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 carbon dioxide. Okay. So whenever we talk about the system, actually we are talking about uh, the different organs which all together perform a one type of function. Okay. So if I'm talking about the circulatory system means there are some uh, uh, one set of uh, organs that actually um, help in the circulation of oxygen, carbon dioxide, nutrients, or you can say the food, absorb food and the waste, okay? And waste material, okay? So uh, whether uh, absorption of nutri nutrient and excretion of the waste. So whenever we're talking about the circulatory system, we actually talking here in the anatomy, we are going to discuss about the organ systems, which all together function in the circulation, okay? So um, if I'm talking about the circulatory system in animal, there is basically two type of circulatory system. One is the closed circulatory system and another one is the open circulatory system. And this closed circulatory system is found in the vertebrates okay so when i'm talking about the vertebrates uh, and there are few invertebrates also which have the closed circulatory system okay and all the vertebrates they are having closed circulatory system a closed circulatory system means uh, that blood is what if anyone anyone can define me blood what is blood anyone okay blood is a cell or a tissue or ma'am ma'am blood Blood, Ma blood is a combination of WBC, RBC, and platelets. Uh, that is, uh, just first confirm me, blood is a tissue or a cell or an organ? Ma'am, tissue. Ma'am, tissue. Okay, so blood is basically a peripheral tissue which have different type of cell, okay, and uh, some minerals and fluid plasma, okay? So when we are talking about the closed circulatory system, uh, it means that the blood or the peripheral tissue, okay, it always enclosed in a different size of vessels, okay, blood vessels. So means this peripheral tissue, it always circulates in the body within the vessels, which are maybe of different size and different thickness, okay. And in this type of system, what happened? Uh, the blood uh, is pumped in the different vessels through one organ which is known as a heart okay so in the closed circulatory system blood or the peripheral tissue okay it always um, contains or flow inside the closed vessel which are of different size and thickness and in these vessels the blood is pumped by heart okay and uh, in closed circulatory system it does not the blood does not fill the general body cavity, okay? And when I'm talking about the open circulatory system, which is common in the mollusk and orthopod, okay? So um, in, in open uh, circulatory system, uh, what uh, uh, here the blood actually, uh, uh, actually bath the entire silomic cavity, okay? Means the blood is not flowing in the closed vessel Simply heart pumps the blood into the body cavity or hemocyl or the silomic cavity. Okay. And again, the blood is diffused back to the circulatory system between the cell. Okay. 
so it means here the blood is flowing openly in the body cavity okay and where the tissue are surrounded by the blood so that is the difference between the open and closed circulatory system as i have told uh, the vertebrates have closed circulatory system and invertebrates uh, have open most of the invertebrates have open circulatory system okay so now i'm asking the fish will have which type of circulatory system open or closed in fishes open in fishes yes open circulatory system in fishes yes ma'am just uh, in this slide only just now i have told the vertebrates have closed ma'am closed sir so fish is a vertebrate or not vertebrate uh, if you are looking on this slide even i have shown uh, the closed circulatory system in the background of there is a disturbance see and Non single circulation. So, ah, uh, fishes, fishes have a closed circulatory system. Blood always flows inside the closed vessels. Okay, so fishes have the closed circulatory system. Now, it is clear or not? Yes, ma'am. Now we will ah. Uh, so first we have talked about the open and closed circulatory system where we have seen what is the main difference between the open and closed circulatory system now we have seen that the vertebrates most of the all the vertebrates have the closed circulatory system including fishes okay now the type of hearts which are found in the vertebrates so basically three basic type of hearts are present in the vertebrate two chambered heart three chambered heart and four chambered heart so fishes they have one two chambered heart amphibian and reptiles have three chambered heart and birds and mammals have four chambered okay so here is a comparison of the two chambered three chambered and four chambered heart so the fishes have most primitive type of heart which are found in the vertebrates it is basically two chambered it have one atrium and one ventricle okay and very peculiar character about fish heart is it it only carries deoxygenated blood venous blood okay that is why the fish heart is also known as a venous heart okay because the fish have two chambered heart which always uh, have deoxygenated blood okay so that's why it is deoxygenated or venous blood okay that's why fish heart is also known as a venous heart now the reptiles and amphibians they have three chambered heart means they have two atria and one ventricle so uh, in this type of heart they have both the oxygenated and deoxygenated blood means here you can see that this blue color is the deoxygenated blood this red color is the oxygenated blood and here the dark blue color shows actually the mm, mixed blood means the oxygenated and deoxygenated blood is mixed here okay uh, there is only one exception in the reptiles that are crocodiles which have four chambered heart otherwise all the amphibian and reptiles have three chambered heart now the mammals and birds they have a four chambered heart two are two you know atria and two ventricles okay and in uh, four chamber heart like birds and the mammals the oxygenated and deoxygenated bloods are in separate chamber means their uh, heart doesn't have any chamber or a reason where the oxygenated and deoxygenated blood get mixed okay and then if we talk about the comparison then the fishes have the single circulation but uh, the reptiles amphibians and birds and mammals they have double circulation now anyone can tell me uh, what is the difference between the single circulation and double circulation or what does mean single circulation and double circulation koi batayega 
मैम ब्लड हार्ट से एक बार होके जाता है सिंगल सर्कुलेशन में अच्छा और और डबल सर्कुलेशन में उसको दो बार गुजरना पड़ता है हार्ट से होकर मैम और सिंगल सर्कुलेशन में वो ऑक्सीजन और डीऑक्सीजनेटेड मिक्स हो जाता है सिंगल मिक्स नहीं होता मतलब हार्ट में ऑक्सीजनेटेड ब्लड नहीं आता है ओके सो यू सी हियर इज द डिफरेंस बिटवीन द सिंगल एंड वर्सेस डबल सर्कुलेशन ओके so if i'm talking about the single circulation means blood flows only once through the heart during a one cycle of passage through the body okay but in the double circulation blood flows twice through the heart okay in double circulatory system uh, blood actually uh, flow in two separate system one is the pulmonary circulation and other one is the systematic circulation pulmonary circulation means uh, the uh, heart actually pumps the blood towards the lungs for oxygenation and then heart again pumps the blood to the diff oxygenated blood uh, through the systematic circulation to the different organ okay and uh, in double circulation the heart may have mixed or oxygenated or venous blood okay means uh, the heart have all th three types of blood when we talking about the double circulation but in the single circulation only venous blood actually pass through the heart okay and the single circulation is found in fishes and double circulation is common in a, means found in the amphibian bird reptiles and mammals okay now we'll talk about the circulatory system in fishes okay so here is actually the comparison of the the heart in a, elasmo branch and in the pileus fish in the cartilaginous fish and in bony fish here you can see there is basically uh, four part of the fish heart one is the arteriosus then ventricle atrium and sinus venosus okay so as i have told fish have two chambered means one atrium and one ventricle but it also have two other parts one is known as conus arteriosus in elasmo branches and bulbus arteriosus in pileus fishes and another is the sinus venous okay so basically it have four uh, parts or four uh, uh, parts okay start with the conus arteriosus ventricular atrium and sinus venosus okay the difference between the elasmo branch and the pileus heart is that so this chamber the arteriosus chambers is bulbous or bulb type in pileus fishes and tubular a type in uh, shark which is known as the cornus arteriosus okay as i have earlier told the fish heart carry only deoxygenated blood that is why it is called as venous heart okay so now here is uh, now uh, we talked about heart now the blood vessels but blood vessels are the tubes okay tube like structure which carries the blood from heart to the different organs okay and it also uh, carry the blood from different organ to the heart okay so basically there is two type of blood vessels one are known as arteries and another are known as veins now what is the difference between the arteries and veins yes. क्योंकि फिशेज में तो जो हार्ट है दैट ऑलवेज कैरीज ए डी ऑक्सीजनेटेड ब्लड तो वहां पे यहाँ पे फिशेज में ऑक्सीजनेशन होता है ऑक्सीजनेशन टेक्स प्लेस एट द गिल्स ओके सो द बेसिकली द आर्टरीज इट कैरीज द ऑक्सीजनेटेड ब्लड फ्रॉम गिल्स टू दी अदर ऑर्गन ओके एंड देन वेन्स एक्चुअली कैरी द डी ऑक्सीजनेटेड ब्लड फ्रॉम डिफरेंट ऑर्गन टू द हार्ट एंड देन टू द गिल्स ओके सो इन जनरल द आर्टरीज दे कैरीज ऑक्सीजनेटेड ब्लड ओके from heart to the rest of the body while uh, veins it returns the deoxygenated blood from the different part of the body to the 
heart. Okay. Now the circulatory system in patient. It is uh, in the patient. Uh, the circulatory system is quite simple and very primitive type. It is basically consist consist of three uh, organ or organ system. One is the heart, then blood and blood. Vessel. Okay, so we will see one by one. So first, we will talk about the heart. The fish has a two-chambered mus heart, which is located below the pharynx. Okay, and immediately behind the gills. And the heart is basically enclosed by a membranous structure, which is known as a per pericardial membrane. So between the pericardial membrane and heart, there is some fluid. Okay, and that. Fluid is known as pericardial fluid. Okay, so heart is enclosed inside a a thin walled bag, which is known as a that thin walled layer is known as a pericardial membrane, and there is a fluid between the heart and that membrane, and that fluid is known as a pericardial fluid. Okay, uh, the fish uh, have two chambered heart, so it have one atrium and one ventricle. Okay, and it also have one sinus venosus. And if I'm talking about sharks, then it have conus arteriosus, and if I'm talking about the telos, it have bulbous arteriosus. Okay, this is the comparison of the or the comparative diagram of the heart in the elastomo branch, and this is in the telos. Here you can see this. This is the sinus venosus. Uh, then to the when the blood enters the sinus venosus from here it enters into the ventricle from ventricle to the atrium and from atrium to the conus arteriosus okay and here um, in telos the blood enters into the sinus venosus then to the atrium from atrium to the ventricle and ventricle to the bulbus okay now uh, so now we will discuss in detail about these four parts of the heart the sinus venosus atrium ventricle and arteriosus okay so first we will talk about the sinus venosus this is the first chamber okay and it basically a collecting chamber okay so uh, in in teleost or the bony fishes two major veins okay one is the hepatic vein and another one is the Pulvarian duct. Okay, so this sinus venosus it collects the blood through two main uh, veins or two major veins. One is the hepatic vein and another one is the pulvarian duct. Okay, and uh, in um, elastomo branches, uh, only one hepatic vein opens into the sinus venosus. That is the difference. If you uh, see the previous slide, here you can see that. There is a single opening in the sinus venosus. This is basically the hepatic opening. Okay, but here you can see there is a two. One is the hepatic, and other one is the pulvarian duct. That is the difference between the uh, elastomo branches and telos. Now the atrium. Okay, this is the chamber which is situated next to the sinus venosus, and the blood which is collected from different vein. In the sinus venosus is now flows into the atrium. Okay, and atrium is the atrium is the largest chamber of the heart. If we uh, compare the size of the four uh, parts like sinus venosus, atrium, ventricle, and arteriosus, so atrium have the largest size or the largest chamber, and it is weakly muscular. So it actually push the blood. It basically it weakly contracts. Okay, contraction is very weak or soft, and after uh, weakly contraction, um, it actually push the blood into the ventricle. So uh, different uh, collecting veins, uh, it get empty inside the sinus venosus. From sinus venosus, blood flows into the atrium, and from atrium, through uh, the weak contraction movement. the blood goes to the ventricle okay now the ventricle is smaller as compared to atrium but it is a well muscled chamber okay and we can say that uh, ventricle is the work horse of the heart okay its continuous contraction drive the blood um, means flow of the blood around the body now the fourth one which is the bulbous arteriosus in the in case of 
teleost and ponous arteriosus in case of elasmo branches so the difference between these two the why in one it is known as a valvus and another as a ponous is that the ponous arteriosus have many valves on the wall okay jo aapka valvus jo ponous arteriosus ka chamber hai it have many wall but in case of valvus arteriosus which is present in the bony fishes it doesn't have any wall okay both are basically elastic and they actually it reduce the pulse nature of valve if it doesn't have the elasticity and the wall what happen uh, the blood of the flow will be like uh, uh, means uh, flow in the pulses matlab ruk ruk ke aise nikal raha hai nikal raha but inki jo movements hote hain elasticity of movements ki wajah se there is always a continuous and con constant and even flow of the blood okay from ventricle to the valves to the uh, blood vessels okay so this these are the four uh, parts of the heart in the fishes now this is the internal structure of the pileus heart this is the ventricle this is the arterioventicular aperture this is the atrium and this is ponous arteriosus and these are the different afferent arteries okay now this is the internal structure of the pileus fishes here um, the quaternion duct and this one is the hepatic one then this is the sinus venosus this is the atrium this is the ventricle and this is bulbous arteriosus okay you just see here is a wall uh, uh, between the sinus venosus to the atrium opening then there is a presence of the wall from atrium to the ventricle opening and then there is a presence of the wall from ventricle to the bulbous arteriosus so anyone can tell me why there is a need of a wall uh, at the mouth of these chambers koi batayega mam blood ka outflow aur inflow na ho upar niche aane it actually prevents the back flow of the blood to the suppose agar blood ko sinus se atrium atrium se ventricle aur ventricle se arteriosus mein jana hai so forward movement hona hai hamesha blood ka okay so these valve actually prevent the backward flow okay now the circulatory mechanism okay so first uh, the deoxygenated blood which is collected by the different veins okay uh, it simply goes inside the sinus venosus okay so basically sinus venosus collect the deoxygenated blood through uh, the veins like hepatic vein quaternion duct okay and then from sinus venosus this deoxygenated blood first enters into the atrium then it enters into the ventricle and from ventricle it enters into the bulbous arteriosus and from bulbous arteriosus it reaches the um, aorta and then to the gills okay and at the gill there is a gaseous exchange take place means uh, jab wo deoxygenated blood when it reaches the gills what happen because the deoxygenated blood have a high concentration of the carbon dioxide and the gill which is continuously bathing by the surrounding water have high concentration of the oxygen and less concentration of the carbon dioxide so what happened the deoxygenated blood have low oxygen water have high oxygen so what will happen simple process of diffusion will occur so um, the oxygen which is dissolved in the water it get diffused uh, okay uh, through the gill surface it enters inside the gill and okay because they are uh, simple along the concentration gradient from higher concentration to the lower concentration and in the deoxygenated blood the concentration of carbon dioxide is more as compared to the water so the carbon dioxide get diffused out from the gills to the surrounding water okay so when the oxygen which is dissolved in uh, in the surrounding water it gets enter inside uh, through the gill inside the blood what happen now this blood become oxygenated okay now this oxygenated blood it reaches to the different body parts through the uh, different arteries or the with the help of 
blood vessels okay so blood actually facilitate the transportation of oxygen and nutrient and it also uh, means help in the exchange of the waste material in the form of carbon dioxide and other waste also okay so this is about the circulatory mechanism in the patients a simplest circulatory closed circulatory mechanism found in the fishes now the artery system in the elastomer branches and teres there is a some difference between um the elastomer branches and the uh, fishes so uh, there is two type of arteries the afferent arteries and the efferent arteries okay so efferent arteries are basically the arteries which carries the deoxygenated blood okay uh, from heart and efferent arteries the arteries which actually takes the oxygenated blood and it circulates to the different body parts so basically uh, the elastomer branches have 1 2 3 4 and 5 five efferent arteries and nine sorry nine efferent arteries this is first efferent artery second efferent third Fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, and ninth. So first and second arteries they actually forms the loop like structure. Then third and fourth they forms the one single loop. Then fifth and sixth they form one loop. Then seventh and eighth also form a loop. And ninth one is a single artery. So the elastomer branches have four efferent arteries. Sorry, five efferent arteries. and nine uh, efferent arteries okay and uh, here you can see in the bony fissures it have four efferent arteries and one two three four efferent arteries okay ab uh, anyone can tell me why uh, elastomer branches have four, five efferent arteries and fishes have uh, means bony fishes have four efferent arteries anyone anyone i'm audible yes or yes ma'am yes ma'am haan to koi batayega aisa kyu hai okay when we differentiate between the elastomer branches and teres the main difference is the number of gill slits okay or uh, the the gill arcs okay so the ila, ila, um, means aapke elastomer branches they have five pairs and teres have four pairs so they have five pairs of uh, uh, gill arc that's why they have a five pairs of efferent arteries and they have four pairs that's why they have four pairs of efferent arteries okay and here you can see that uh, they have five pairs or efferent arteries and nine efferent arteries here the bony fishes have four efferent arteries and four efferent arteries okay first and second all together uh, form one epibranchial artery and third and fourth together forms the second epibranchial artery which opens into the dorsal aorta from where it goes to the oxygenated blood it goes to the different organ okay now the blood cells in the fishes okay so uh, blood fishes se kabhi blood dekha hai fish mein blood ka color kya hota hai fish blood dekha hai red hai red hota hai kyun hota hai किसकी वजह से हीमोग्लोबिन हीमोग्लोबिन की वजह से ओके सो द ब्लड इन द फिश इट इज रेड इन कलर एंड इट कंसिस्ट ऑफ फ्लूड प्लाज्मा एंड ब्लड सेल्स ओके इफ आई एम टॉकिंग अबाउट द ब्लड सेल्स इट हैव रेड ब्लड सेल्स व्हाइट ब्लड सेल्स एंड थ्रोम्बोसाइट्स आर आल्सो प्रेजेंट ओके द वेरी पिक्युलर कैरेक्टर अबाउट द आरबीसी इन फिशेस इज दैट the rbcs are nucleated otherwise in other vertebrates the rbc or the red blood cells 
the mature red blood cells are enucleated means they lack the nucleus when they get mature they the nucleus simply gets degenerated but in the case of fishes the mature rbc have the new well developed nucleus okay so this is uh, your uh, rbc this is a nucleated oval and it contains the respiratory pigment hemoglobin then there is a white blood cells white blood cells are of two types the granular and a uh, granular okay and they are also known as the basophils acidophils or neutrophils this classification basophils acidophils and neutrophils is basically based on the stain uh, they okay the the stain they actually takes okay so uh, and then from these rbcs uh, here you can see that the number one is the normal erythrocyte The number B is the activated erythrocyte or RBC. Then C is the thrombocyte, okay, or the neutrophil. D is the heterophil. E is the eosinophil. This is the monocyte. This is basophil, and then the uh, sorry, either C. This is uh, and this is the lymphocyte. This is basophil. This is monocyte, eosinophil. Then apka. Atrophil, neutrophil, thrombocyte, activated, and normal erythrocytes. Okay, so um, these are the different type of blood cells which are found in the fishes. Now the respiratory pigment. Okay, the fishes have hemoglobin as a respiratory pigment, but there is a polymorphism in the respiratory pigment. Means there are a different fishes have uh, the different possible combinations of the respiratory pigment like uh, most of the teleosed fishes they have the hemoglobin which is a tetrameric molecule if i'm talking about tetrameric molecules means the mo basically hemoglobin is a protein okay a respiratory uh, pigment or a protein which have uh, if i'm talking about tetrameric means it have four different ch individual chains okay if you remember the structure of the hemoglobin it basically two alpha and two beta chains okay so most of the teleosed fishes have tetrameric hemoglobin which have two alpha and two beta chain but there is some fishes like agnathus okay hag fishes lampreys they possess the monomeric hemoglobin okay and there is one uh, antarctic fish which is also known as the um, ice fish okay they do not have hemoglobin mm. सो कोई बता सकता है कि फिशेस में ऐसा क्यों है देर आर फ्यू फिशेज विच हैव टेट्रामेरिक हीमोग्लोबिन देर आर फ्यू फिशेज विच हैव मोनोमेरिक हीमोग्लोबिन एंड देर इज वन फिश देर आर वन ग्रुप ऑफ फिशेज दैट डू नॉट हैव हीमोग्लोबिन ऐसा क्यों है कोई बता सकता है एनी वन अच्छा ये जो अंटार्कटिक फिश है इट डजेंट हैव अ हीमोग्लोबिन तो यहां में कैसे होता है ऑक्सीजन का ट्रांसपोर्टेशन हम ओके सो ये जो टाइप ऑफ हीमोग्लोबिन हैं फिशेस में टेट्रामेरिक मोनोमेरिक और सम फिशेस वुड डजेंट हैव द हीमोग्लोबिन This is basically the environmental adaptation. Okay, or just like if I mean most of the teleosed fishes, ki baat karu like we believe, ab katona hai, mackerel hai, um, rohu katla. If I'm talking about these fishes, okay, they are active swimmers. Okay, so they continuously need the more oxygen. Movement zada ho raha hai. Prey ke, मतलब prey feeding ke liye bhi movement hai, breeding ke liye bhi movement hai. Then migration ke time mein bhi they are moving na from far places. एक्टिविटी बहुत ज्यादा है फिजिकल एक्टिविटी सो उन सब के लिए बेसिकली क्या चाहिए एनर्जी चाहिए और दे आर एरोबिक एनिमल्स सो दे नीड द ऑक्सीजन टू एक्सट्रैक्ट द एनर्जी ओके फ्रॉम जो भी उनके बॉडी में स्टोर्ड फूड है उससे उनको जो एनर्जी चाहिए फॉर दैट दे नीड एक्चुअली द ऑक्सीजन ओके सो दैट्स वाई दे हैव अ ट्रेट्रामेरिक हीमोग्लोबिन ओके बट लाइक सेकेंड ग्रुप द लैम प्रेज इन दैग फिश ओके इसमें क्या होता है दे आर वेरी स्लगिश फिश ओके बहुत एक्टिव मूवमेंट्स नहीं है बहुत एक्टिव स्विमर्स नहीं है ये सो मोनोमेरिक हीमोग्लोबिन से भी इनको जितनी ऑक्सीजन की रिक्वायरमेंट है वो हो जाती है नाउ द थर्ड ग्रुप द अंटार्कटिक जो फिशेज हैं दे दे हार्डली मूव फ्रॉम वन प्लेस टू द अनदर 
ओके एंड अंटार्कटिक फिशेस मींस अ वेरी कोल्ड वाटर्स मतलब कि आपका माइनस में टेम्परेचर होता है पानी का सो so, वाटर जितना चिल्ड होता है डिजोल्व ऑक्सीजन उसमें जो डिजोल्व ऑक्सीजन है वो चिल्ड वाटर में ज्यादा है उसके बाद ये जो फिशेस होते हैं अंटार्कटिक फिशेस उनका हार्ट का साइज भी बड़ा होता है देखिए ब्लड वॉल्यूम भी उनकी बॉडी में ज्यादा होता है और क्योंकि वो बिल्कुल मूवमेंट नहीं करते हैं तो जो उनकी ऑक्सीजन की रिक्वायरमेंट है वो भी बहुत कम होती है दैट्स व्हाई दे डजन हैव द स्पेसिफिक दे डजन हैव अ रेस्पिरेटरी पिगमेंट टू कैरी द ऑक्सीजन वो जितनी ऑक्सीजन ब्लड में जो डिफ्यूजन के थ्रू आ रही है वो सफिशियंट है उससे ही जो है उसका काम हो जाता है सो दीज आर दो ये तीनों ही कंडीशन जो है फिशेज में मिलती है the tetrameric hemoglobin the monomeric hemoglobin and some fishes which doesn't have hemoglobin okay so now the some uh, detail about the respiratory pigment as i have told in most of the telos it is tetrameric it have two alpha and two beta chains okay and the oxygen it binds uh, in the reversible and the cooperative fashion in the four heme groups here you can see this is uh, this blue and red is the beta chain this yellow and blue one is the alpha chain these four one two three this is the heme units with the iron atoms okay and uh, so this is the structure of the respiratory pigment in the fishes okay even the fishes have different uh, Tet suppose a tetrameric uh, hemoglobin. I am talking about two alpha, two beta chain, but there are some variations exist in alpha and beta chain. So a single fish may have two type of hemoglobin. Okay, like if I am talking about the goldfish, they have three types of hemoglobin in their blood. Okay, and um, and there are some fishes like angula. It have only one type of hemoglobin in their blood. There are some another fishes which have even four type of hemoglobin. In the same fish, okay. So, uh, yeah, this is about uh, today's class.